Hi, good morning. It's Helen from the Cut Flower Patch here um, to sow the seeds from our December seed kit. Um, we are in the middle of January now, so we are running a little bit late with this, but because the weather was so frosty at the beginning of December, uh, if you remember, um, I didn't feel that was a good time to sow them. And then of course the light levels start to drop and the days are quite short towards the end of the month. So I've decided to delay it until um, the middle of January, which I hope means we'll all get some better results from those seeds. Um, this will be the last time we sow five seeds in a month, five different seeds in a month, because we've decided to change the way we work. Um, I've had lots of lots of feedback from cut flower patch growers who just tell me that five different seeds every month is far too many and they have a lot of wastage and then they get frustrated and I feel like I'm um, selling people things that they don't really need and I feel a bit uncomfortable with that. So, or very uncomfortable with it in fact. So what we're going to do now is have six, six different seeds, six, you'll it's received six different seeds every two months so essentially that's three packets of seeds a month um again with a break in june and july because there's not much uh, that's suitable to sow in those months so everyone will be getting 30 packets of seeds uh, a year if you subscribe for a full year um but i will be sending out more details of that shortly i'm just making the relevant changes to the website and then um if you want to subscribe you'll be able to do that uh, but in the meantime, I'll get on with sowing the seeds from the December kit. Okay, so first off, uh, our delphinium seeds. We're not actually going to sow these today. Uh, they're going into the freezer for a couple of weeks. That's because they need to go through a process called stratification, uh, which essentially means they need to be cold in order to break the dormancy of the seed. So I'm going to pop these in the freezer now and then put a reminder in my calendar uh, for a couple of weeks time uh, to sow them then so we'll come back to those uh, in a couple of weeks okay so first off i'm going to sow uh, the corn marigold so this is um, a native wildflower um, it has a lovely nectar rich bright yellow daisy like flowers which will bloom over a long period of time so they are good um, as a cut flower um, they are liked by uh, bees, by pollinators, so um, if you've also got a wildflower garden, it's something you might want to add um, to that. You might want to add some corn marigold to that, to that garden too. Uh, they can be sown all year round, but I think you probably get better results if you start off by sowing them indoors, so that's what uh, I'm going to do today. Now, as I said, I'm becoming increasingly sort of mindful of how little sp space a lot of growers have and how they're struggling to actually um, find space to nurture and uh, look after their seedlings. So I'm going to try and be as economical as possible in terms of the containers that we use for sowing. I think the other thing is as well, a lot of us, we just sow too many seeds and then we get overwhelmed with them. So in some ways by containing, having smaller containers, you then contain the number that you grow. So I hope that's going to be helpful too. So this, is, um, this container had mushrooms in. Um, it didn't have any drainage holes in already, so I've added some holes to the bottom. I've just used the skewer um, to poke some holes through. Drainage is really important, otherwise you're going to get your seeds waterlogged. So I filled this with peat-free multi-purpose compost, and I've sieved that compost to get rid of any, um, any sort of uh, big, big bits of soil or uh, bark uh, just because their seeds are so small we don't want that getting in the way of the seeds growing um, and then I depress that slightly you don't want to depress it um, really firmly because you want to keep some in there some air in there but you do want to get rid of any big air pockets I've also li oh, lightly watered this um, in advance um, you can actually water your seeds after you've sown them, but um, I find it just, a, just easier to water in advance and then you're less likely to dislodge your seeds. But if you do forget to do it in advance, don't worry, you can do it afterwards. And just be careful not to overwater. You just want it moist, not really soaking wet. So the corn marigold seeds, they're a seed that needs to be surfaced sown. Um, so the seeds are tiny, well, reasonably small so they're my corn marigold i think you've got around 200 seeds 
in your pack so you've got plenty to work with so you can always do another sewing if your first sewing isn't successful so i'm just going to sprinkle seeds all across the surface of this i'm probably saying maybe 50 or so and then just very very lightly depress them into the soil to make sure they get make contact with the soil and then um, I'm going to put my label in there. Don't forget your label. Common mistake to make, but you won't remember what you've sewn. And I always put the date that I've sewn them on the label because I do find that a useful uh, reference point. So that is now going to go in, um, into a clear plastic bag and then onto the kitchen windowsill. As soon as I see the first signs of germination, I'm going to take, take them out of the plastic bag and then bring them down to the greenhouse because they'll need to benefit from more light uh, in order to in order to uh, develop. If you don't have a greenhouse, you can use a polytunnel or um, a cold frame. And um, there is an article on the Cut Flower Patch website about alternatives to greenhouses. So greenhouses aren't essential, um, just in case that's something you were you were wondering about. Okay, so that's the corn marigold. I'm hoping that within about sort of seven ten days, I'm going to see the first signs of germination. So now on to Snapdragon. Uh, we did have some Snapdragon, uh, a different variety obviously in the box a couple of months ago, um, but I've decided to include another one because one, they don't take up too much space. And secondly, they're really easy to grow. And probably thirdly as well, they do keep, uh, keep flowering for a long period of time. I had great success with Snapdragon last year. So I thought it probably was a good idea to um, have another Snapdragon variety in a cut flower box. I don't tend to um, put, I don't tend to duplicate types of flowers too often, but occasionally I think certain flowers, um, like Cosmos and Sweet Pea, it's worth having more than one, one variety in our cut flower patches. Um, another one that's um, very attractive to pollinators, bees and butterflies, um, this is a variety called Apple Blossom, which has lovely bicolored blooms. So it's sort of like a white flushed flower with pink centers. Um, this particular series has been specifically bred for tall, strong stems and long spikes. So it does make them especially good um, to use as a cut flower. So I'm looking forward to seeing these um, come the spring. Um, so this is pretty much, the way we're going to sew these is pretty much a repeat of how we sewed uh, the corn marigold. It's another surface sew seed. Uh, this time I've taken from our kitchen um, a container that had tomatoes in. Uh, this has got some drainage holes in the bottom, so I haven't had to add any holes to this. Again, they're quite, um, quite small, so very good in terms of space saving in, in the greenhouse polytunnel um, or wherever you're going to uh, leave them to. To develop. Um, again, I've put in sieved multi-purpose compost into here and I've moistened it lightly. Um, you can use seed compost if you prefer, um, but I find multi-purpose compost is just as good. But if you have seed, seed compost, then by all means use that. Okay, so this is um, oh, tiny seed. Um, so I don't know if you can see those very small black seeds, which I always find a bit tricky. So um, because this is a hybrid variety, specially developed variety, they are a little bit more expensive. So um, you don't have quite as many seeds in, in your pack. So please handle them with care because they are small and um, you don't want to lose them. So I'm just going to surface sew probably about half the packet here and save some, keep some back just in case the first sewing doesn't work. In the main, we do have really good success rates with our seeds. We do buy very, very high quality fresh seeds. So you should find um, a reasonably, hopefully you'll have a good good success rate. Most, most growers do. Okay, so I'll pop those onto the surface and just um, put my finger over them lightly just to try and make sure they make contact with, with the surface of the soil. Um, again, put your label in. Um, that is going to go in a clear plastic bag on the kitchen window sill again. And as soon as I see the first signs of germination, they will get taken out um, of the plastic bag and come down into our greenhouse. Um, when they get the first set of two true leaves, so initially they have the first two leaves that come through are called the seed leaves. 
and then the next set of leaves are called the true leaves. So when they get the first set of true leaves, um, I will pick those out. Uh, and actually the same thing applies with the corn marigold as well. Um, but if you, um, there is something on the cut flower patch website about pricking out if it's something you haven't done before. Okay, so that's, that's our snapdragon. Here's our bergamot. Um, this is a little bit more unusual, um, lovely flower. Each flower consists of a large number of uh, tubular flowers growing from a central point, sort of creating like a shaggy dome of petals. Um, they do bloom profusely um, and are very long lasting. So again, an excellent flower for cutting. Um, each plant can produce up to 20 long stems and does, as I say, have a very long flowering season from early summer right through to autumn. So um, they will need deadheading as well. They will bloom more profusely if you do deadhead them periodically. Um, and again, another great pollinator. Um, it's also good as a bedding plant. So if you do want to grow some extras for your borders, then that's something uh, you might want to consider doing too. Okay, so what I'm going to do uh, with the bergamot is sow it into one of these modular seed trays. And again, being aware of space, I'm going to sow half of the tray uh, with the bergamot, then the other half with the viola. Uh, this is a 24 cell seed tray. Um, you could use um, the trays that we've just used now, recycled things from the kitchen or you could use a tray with fewer modules in. I just do quite like these uh, 24 cell modular trays. Um, again, I've put sifted multi-purpose peat-free compost in here. Um, and then I'm going to uh, depress the compost slightly, just very lightly. I don't want to get um, rid of the air. I just want to get rid of any pockets of air. So I'm just going to use another seed tray to depress that. I'm then going to water the compost lightly, so be careful not to overwater, just a smattering of water. I'll do the other side as well, ready for sowing the viola. As I said earlier, I do find it easier to water in advance because um, you then don't dislodge the seeds. But if you do forget to, wa uh, forget to water beforehand, you can always water um, afterwards. So the bergamot seeds are quite small again. We've got a month of small seeds, haven't we? Which isn't great. As you can see, they are quite tiny. So what I'm going to try and do is just put a small number in each in each of the cells, maybe two or three if I can contain it to that, to that number. You might end up with more, you might end up with less, but hopefully um, it'll all come good. Um, and then when I've sown these, um, I'm only going to very lightly cover the seeds. So, um, we're not, we're not surface sowing these, but we don't actually want too much compost on the top of these. You might not be able to see that, sorry, but I've just put a few seeds in each of the cells. And then I'm going to lightly cover those with some, with some of the compost. I won't do it all now because it's not the most exciting part of the process for you to watch. But say just a light smattering of compost on the top. So last, but certainly not least, um, we're going to sow the um, viola. This is a variety called Sorbet Tiger Eye. Um, so it's quite different to many viola. It's, um, it's got quite rich yellow flowers that have a dark centre with sort of stripes radiating out from the centre. So it does look, so it's got like that tiger-like look to it. Um, it's early flowering and has a really should have a really brilliant perform you know should really perform brilliantly in our cut flower patch, and it's rewarding and easy to grow. So normally you probably wouldn't class viola as a cut flower, but these um, have quite long stems, so they are really nice for small va small to small vase for small vases, and indeed um, the more you cut, the more you encourage them to grow. So we're going to sow these. Um, into into the other side of the uh, modular tray with the bergamot in one side and again I'm going to just sprinkle a few of the seeds onto the surface. It is another hybrid variety so again um, you don't get 
a lot of um, seeds, 50 seeds to the pack. So again, please be careful with them because they are quite small. So as I say, when I've sown these, um, I just need to get a few more from the pack. They're going to go, um, I'm going to cover them so they're just about two millimetres deep. So it's not a lot of, a lot of compost going on the top. And when I've done that, we're going to put on top of it uh, the tray that comes with these modular trays, the cover. Um, if your trays don't have a lid, you can put them in a plastic bag or pop a shower cap on top. Just something to keep them moist and warm. But as I say, these trays, that's one of the reasons I do like them. They do come with these nice and easy to use uh, plastic lids. So that is going to go uh, again on the kitchen windowsill. As soon as I see the first signs of germination, uh, the lid's going to come off and they're going to come out into my greenhouse. So if you don't have a greenhouse, your polytunnel, etc. Um, and again, when uh, they have their first two true leaves, I'm going to uh, pick them out. But in the meantime, they're going to, oh, I just remembered, haven't put my label in. In the meantime, hopefully they're going to happily germinate uh, in the kitchen. Okay, well, I think that covers everything for today. So do let me know how you get on and um, I look forward to catching up with you shortly.